the narration mentioned that Bilal radiallahu anhu would often give the adhan and then he would call the message of Allah and the message of Allah hadn't come out so he went to call the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he was becoming conscious and then unconscious and Bilal said wa huzna he said what grief he said what grief he said I wish my mother had never given me birth that I see this day or that I had died before seeing this day and then Bilal went to give the adhan and he became unconscious. And then when the Prophet wasallam passed away, the narrations mentioned the Prophet wasallam body was still not buried. And Bilal gave the adhan. And when he reached Ashhadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, often when he would reach this state, the Prophet wasallam would come out of the house which was adjacent to the masjid. And he looked and there was no messenger wasallam. And then Rachel mentioned that Bilal began to choke. And he began to cry and all those around him began to cry. And for the next three days, Bilal radiallahu anhu tried to give the adhan. Every time he would reach Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah, he would begin to choke. And then he went to Abu Bakr and he said, Abu Bakr, because he couldn't bear to remain in Medina without the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, Abu Bakr, allow me to leave. Because I heard the Prophet ﷺ mention the virtue of jihad. I want to do jihad. And Abu Bakr said, no, Bilal, you stay with me. I need you. And Abu Bilal radiallahu said, Abu Bakr, if you freed me for yourself, then keep me. But if you freed me for the sake of Allah, then let me go. And Abu Bakr radiallahu allowed him to go. And he went into jihad. And then one night, of Bilal radiallahu anhu was sleeping and he saw a dream and in the dream he saw the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said oh Bilal what is it that you never come to visit us and he woke up and he traveled towards Medina at a hurried pace and when he reached Medina he lay on the grave of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remembering his Habib and Hassan and Hussein came and they said oh Bilal give the adhan and it was a request of the grandchildren of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Bilal radiallahu anhu got up and he gave the dhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the narration mentioned that Medina erupted. It erupted because it brought back the memory of the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The men and women came out of their house; they were ripping their clothes, tearing their hair out because it reminded them of the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And then Bilal, he tried to stay in Medina, but he found it difficult. Because everywhere he would look, it would remind him of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And he couldn't bear to remain in Medina and he left. And then came the occasion of the conquest of Masjid al-Aqsa. And the patriarch said that I will only give the key to Umar ibn al-Khattab. And Umar radiallahu anhu traveled from Medina to Masjid al-Aqsa. And all the Sahaba were there. Abu Baydat ibn al-Jarrah, Sharhbil ibn Hasana, Khalid ibn Walid, Muadh ibn Jabal. And they went up to Umar and they said, Oh Umar, request Bilal to give the adhan. And Umar asked Bilal to give the adhan. And the narration mentioned that when Bilal reached, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah. Those beards of the Sahaba when they embraced Islam which were black and now had become grey, they became drenched with tears. There was there, there no Sahabi whose beard was not drenched. They had to console Umar ibn al-Khattab because it reminded them of being in the company of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this was amazing virtue for Bilal. For he gave a dhan in the Haram in Makkah, in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu and also in Masjid Al-Aqsa, all three of the most holiest places. And then Bilal radiallahu anhu, and the 20th year, he passed away. And the narration mentioned in Damascus, he was passing away. And his wife said, when she was passing away, she said, Wa huzna. She said, what grief, what sadness. And Bilal said, La. He said, Say, Wa farha. He said, What happiness? What happiness? Ghadan sa'alqi Muhammadan wa 
ashaba he said tomorrow gadan sa altaqi muhammad wa ashaba he said tomorrow i will meet the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the companions can you imagine can you really imagine you know what kind of imam wallahi you're dying you're leaving this dunya and you're happy to leave this dunya because you want to meet the message of allah when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that dunya sijn al mu'min wa jannatu al kafir that the dunya is sijn al mu'min is a prison for the believer and the jannah for the kafir the ulama right why is it a prison for the believer because it stops him from meeting allah in his rasul it's a prison because it doesn't allow you to meet allah in his rasul and it's a jannah for the kafir because this is all that they have and can you imagine the state that you are dying you are dying but you are happy to die because you want to meet the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and bila radhiyallahu anhu passed away in the 20th year of hijrah he is buried in damascus in maqbara bab as-saghir in damascus and his grave is still there and many people go and visit the grave of bila radhiyallahu anhu but this was a man that he may be buried here but by Allah he's destined for jannah and i don't say these words lightly allah and his rasul gave testimony but there were many other testimonies